Hi, I'm Dave Elsie, aka Mischief, and this is a conspiracy cupboard. Just uh, mind that title so you can send your way in. Every time. Hi, welcome to Christmas Business Covered. As I said, I'm Dave Elsie, and today's episode is about Ernest Alexanderson. Now, Ernest Alexanderson worked for many people, including General Electric and RCA. We'll get into those in a minute. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be doing a bit of a compilation about General Electric and the role that they played on our society and the way that our infrastructure and everything is built. So, Starting off with good old Ernest Alexanderson then. So Ernest Alexanderson lived between 1878 and 1975. Alex was one of the most important engineers of the 20th century. He was a maker of 344 patent inventions, from the variable speed AC monitor to many devices for telecommunications. As a worldwide respected name in technology, he helped guide corporate research to further develop radio and other technologies. His philosophy, which helped him innovate, was that the most fertile soil for inventions was the boundary between technological systems. In other words, by crossing over inventions from one mainstream use to another area, he could solve problems <clears throat> as he was a control engineer, power utility engineer, radio engineer, electrical engineer, philosopher and manager. So, in his early life then, Ernest Frederick Warner Alexanderson was born on the 25th of January 1878 in Uppsala, Sweden. I, I'm going to apologise now, I'm probably going to get some of these names wrong and there's some difficult names to say in this, <laughs> so bear with me. His father, Professor A.M. Alexanderson, was a teacher at the University of Uppsala. Because of an aptitude for mechanics, he entered the Royal Technical University in Stockholm and was graduated as an electrical and mechanical engineer. He attended the Technical University in Berlin, Germany for one year. As the son of a professor of languages, Alexander as a boy learned English, German, French and Latin. So, you know, fairly easy and I can do English and bad English and yeah, I think that's about it. <clears throat> In addition to his native Swedish, <laughs> when an English copy of Alternating Current Phenomena by Charles P. Stamets fell into Alexanderson's hand in Berlin, he was able to read the volume. It made such an impression on him that he decided to move to America and seek work with Stamets. Stamets revolutionised the electrical world by changing the way scientists and engineers thought about electrical circuits. Stamets used numbers and algebra to analyse electrical circuits whereas previously engineers were using graphical representations of circuits. By the 1900s, Stamets' impact was global, and Alexanderson was excited by Stamets' work, so much so that he, in his notebook in 1901, he drew colourful complex notes and wrote Stamets at the top of the page on AC monitors. So on arrival to America then, uh, Alexanderson visited Edison's operation at Melno Park. Alexanderson observed that the great days of unrestricted exploration was replaced by an autocratic system. Alexanderson then withdrew his application to work for the Edison Company. In December 1901, Alexanderson came to Stachenbury and met Dr. Stamets, the fellow Swede Ernest J. Berg. At the time, Alexanderson was, <clears throat> was in his first job in the US as a draftsman for the C&C Electrical Company. He had learnt from the best including William B. Porter, who had been the mastermind at Thomas Hudson Company. In 1904, after the test, he became a member of the engineering staff designing generators under the direction of Stamets. Come on. <laughs> this is a long text, okay, guys? <laughs> so, Alexanderson's first patent was for a reverse current relay for projecting against short circuit fails. He worked on the idea in, in October 1902 and later his invention saved a lot of money in the power systems by removing the need for an instrument line between stations. Second patent for improvement of AC monitor hit a snag when Stamets reviewed it and discovered a problem with the design. GE's patent department then stopped the motion to patent. Alexanderson then figured out a solution to the problem and decided not to tell GE wanting to instead sell it to another company and make more money. Clever man. 
Alexanderson was a clear-headed guy. He was not a guy that could be taken advantage of. Alexanderson was a genius who knew his value. He found the drafting jobs boring. <clears throat> he stopped. He shopped around for jobs and was frequently trying to get raises. Despite Stamets being his hero, he did not let on to General Electric that he was desperate to work there. He always negotiated and made his move carefully. If Alexanderson was not tenacious and confident, he would have likely ended up in a non-impactful job and not had the impact on us that he's leaving today. His inventions then touched on everything from television to radio to which every layman can understand and everyone uses today. He improved complex apparatus for the AC systems which were very important yet seldom understood by the layman. Ernest Alexanderson made the power breakthrough that allowed Reginald Fredenden to transmit a human voice across a long distance in 1906. Fredenden needed a continuous wave transmitter pure sine wave on a single frequency to make a voice. He turned to General Electric as he knew they had some of the world's best engineers in the field at the time. An assignment to build a high frequency alternator for Professor Reginald Fredenden, Fredenden, one of the pioneer radio experimenters gave Alexanderson an opportunity to prove himself. Fredenden contacted General Electric to help design and produce a series of high frequency alternate transmitters in 1903. Charles Stamets delivered a 10K version, uh, which proved limited use, but could not be directly used for radio transmitter. Fresenden's request for a faster, more powerful unit was then assigned to Alexanderson. After two years of work during which several models were constructed, Alexanderson delivered a practical alternator, and it was installed in the Fresenden station at Brack Rock, Massachusetts on Christmas Eve of 1906, which enabled the station to transmit the first broadcast of entertainment and music in history. So then, uh, his inventions were widespread. And while we think today of radio and GPS as being necessary for aircraft and ships, it did not start that way. After a sinking incident in 1909, where wireless successfully summoned nearby ships to help, it became apparent that wireless should be required for ships. The Navy was a large supporter of wireless development and ordering alternators from General Electric. There were attempts by German and US navies to regulate wireless and limit its civilian and commercial um, development. Fredenden was active politically to oppose these forces as he saw his work should benefit society and not just improve war applications. I totally agree with him. Today, if you think about it, without these guys and without the inventions of these guys, I wouldn't be talking to you now over YouTube. Um, you wouldn't be watching um, television. We wouldn't be listening to radio. You know, you'd never have heard Led Zeppelin. How mad is that? So then by the end of World War One. The British-controlled Marconi Company renewed negotiations first instituted in 1915. They wanted exclusive use of the Alexanderson alternator to prevent its sale from fallen militaries. The US government encouraged formation of the Radio Corporation of America. General Electric, which controlled the technology, refused the Marconi offer and backed the new corporation, which of Dr. Alexanderson became the chief engineer in 1919. Meanwhile, he had developed a host of other radio improvements, some of which became increasingly important as vacuum tubes replaced alternators. One of these tuned radio frequency receiver systems providing selective tuning patented in 1916 dominated the radio industry. Other notable Alexanderson radio developments included the magnetic amplifier, the magnetic alternator, the multiple tuned antenna, the antistic receiving antenna, the directional transmitting antenna. He also devised radio antimeters. His studies in polarization of radio waves made possible effective radio detective finders. <sighs> wow. So Alexander became a prominent uh, person in pursuing radio research on a mass scale at General Electric after 1912. His word carried significant weight in the company and GE Research Lab diversified greatly in that decade due to the advent of many new electronic devices. I mean, the influences that General Electric and this guy had, you know, when you start hearing about this is... it. <laughs> It's absolutely incredible, really, isn't it? From 1919 to 1924, Dr. Alexanderson divided his time between General Electric and RCA, maintaining his residence in laboratory in Secretary 
but personally superintending construction of powerful radio stations in Sweden, Poland, England, Hawaii, California and on Long Island. At the opening of Transatlantic Station in Gremerton in his native Sweden, Dr. Alexanderson received the Order of the North Star from the hands of the King Gustav V. So after his success then in radio, Alexanderson turned to television. In 1926, Alexanderson was working on sending images over radio, Fasimel Radio Telegraphy. It was through this work that he saw a way to make television, video transmissions. Work. While some histor history texts would like to look for one single inventor to, in inventor to the television, it is not really possible to isolate one person. What is clear is that Alexander played a key role in making the invention happen. Despite his great intelligence and vision, he later said that he never envisioned the huge social impact of television broadcasts. I don't think any of us could really um, fathom what would come out of the invention of television and you know like i've just said i'm speaking to you right now over youtube you're watching me on your phone you know would we have this technology without these guys and the answer is uh no so then with the separation of general electric company and the radio corporation of america starting in the 1930s alex anderson devoted himself to power application and electrical science such as power transmission with direct current. Alice Anderson was not happy about the split of GE and RCA. This would end support for his radio television research, despite his continued interest in shortwave phenomena and television. Alex used his military connections to get funding to continue work in radio and television after, after the RCA split. He wrote to David Sarnoff many times and con to, con to continue to support his TV work at GE, but <clears throat> in the end he could not get his support. In addition to his radio achievements, Alex Anderson has produced an ever lengthening list of inventions in the power control. These account for many of his patents obtained over a period of 35 years. On an average, it's roughly one patent every seven weeks. Just think about that for a minute. One pa I, I can't even, I can barely write a chapter of the book I'm trying to write every seven weeks let alone do a patent every seven weeks so alex of course was more than just a technical guy he had an interest in the big picture of society this makes sense of course because he was watching the world change directly as a result of his own inventions he wrote speeches like television and its uses in war and peace in which he talked about his own blindness in seeing the social significance of TV and where we were headed. He saw the need for breathing room so that an area of technology could mature. For example, television requires a loudspeaker for voice reproduction, the RCT for image, radio transmission and camera technologies all to be caught up with one another. Alex Anderson wrote to the FCC and GE management about philosophies of how scientists and engineers should reach and foster creation. He spoke of the interdependence of broad range technologies and that GE Research Lab continued to have this integration and drive to drive development. One important trait of engineers he believed was to understand that good engineers use resourcefulness, skill, courage and do not worry on focus or focus on success. That's a pretty good concept. In the 1930s, he developed a passion for sailing and was a founding member of Lake George's Yacht Club. He took to the West Indies and owned many boats at Lake George. <clears throat> Unfortunately, all of this time his hearing deteriorated and he had to wear a hearing aid. So then some of uh, Dr. Alex Anderson's awards then. In 1934, Dr. Alex Anderson was elected by the Royal Academy of Science of Sweden, the body which bestows the Nobel Pe uh, Peace Prizes on science. Uh, besides the Swedish Order of the North Star, Dr. Alex Anderson received the Medal of Honor for the Institute of Radio Engineers in 1919, a knighthood of Polish Order of Polona Rysutina in 1924, and John Ericsson Medal for Outstanding Contributions to the Field of Radio Engineering in 1928. He was a member of the past president for Institute of Radio Engineers, IRE and a fellow American Institute of Electrical Engineers. He received honorary degrees for Doctor of Science from Union College, Sigentry, that's the place I can't say, 1929. <laughs> and Doctor, I'm going to just comment on how that's meant to be said or you know, do a video on how you're meant to say this 
bloody word, and Doctor of Philosophy from the Royal University of Uppsala, Sweden, in 1938. In 1940, his name was listed on a wall of fame, honouring foreign-born citizens who have made notable contributions to American democracy. This was unveiled at the New York's World Fair. I mean, this guy, I mean, before I did the research on him, I'd never, uh, and, and looking into General Electric, I'd never heard of uh, Ernest, um, as I'm sure most of you hadn't before. But, wow, this guy is just incredible. So then here is just a small list of some of Alexanderson's inventions or things that he improved, technology that he worked on with other people and improved or was brought to him and he just made it work, basically. So starting off then, we've got naval communication, radio, te tele radio telephone, radio telephony, improved, self-exciting alternator, invented, television, improved, home television reception, transmission of radio and still images over radio invented long distant voice transmission invented ship propulsion turbo electric generator improved ac railroad transaction monitors single phase improved long distance telephone magnetic amplifiers improved vacuum tubes helped albert hume improve them radio ultimator improved dc and ac circuit switches improved ac and dc Improved electronically controlled guns for the Navy. Improved antenna designed. Improved drones and weapons guided by television. Conceived and developed. Large screen projection TV. I think we can all thank him for that one, can't we really? Okay. So invented <laughs> industrial power system improvements like the Alphamine. Alphamide. Like the Amplitide, Amplit, he improved it anyway. Railroad signaling technology. Invented all-wave radio receiver, magnetic amplifier to control radio in 1912. Made the first working prototype, phase converter using electrical railways. Invented, the list is pretty much endless. Like I say, he's got 344 patents, this guy. It, there was a patent every seven weeks. A new invention, every seven weeks weeks so there we have it then um a bit about uh, an amazing guy ernest alexanderson unfortunately he passed away obviously in 1975 um but yeah i mean the impact this guy had on our society on every day to day life is just incredible so i hope you've enjoyed today's video um and hope you've learned something as well and had a bit of fun in the process i'm going to put some outtakes at the end of this video um some of the names might have got me a little bit you know and um if you know how to pronounce the name of this uh beautiful city wherever it is uh, i do apologize then please let me know and uh yeah so then my next lot of videos coming up will be on Ryan Graves, Commander David Favour and Chad Gable, uh, all covering those military incidences. Um, if you have any videos at all uh, that you would like to send in to me, please put them into the channel. Uh, and if you are from the UK, Navy, Royal Air Force, you've got any stories you want to tell, you want to say anything, I'm obviously not trying to get you to break any confidentiality things that you've got, but anything that you guys want to bring forward, I, I would love to hear from our military about sightings of UFOs and things that they've seen, um, just to see what's out there, what's going on. So that'll be uh, my next video coming up. But yeah, uh, so Ernest Alexanderson then, fascinating guy. Uh, if you want to do a bit more research or check out about him or look into General Electric a bit more yourself and see what kind of inventions and stuff came out of General Electric, it's an absolutely fascinating read and it's a rabbit hole to go down as well because there's so much and so much of our infrastructure um, came from there. Um, so, like I said, I've got a special episode that I'll be doing as well um, on Graham Hancock. Now, Graham Hancock is a British author um, an absolutely fantastic guy, uh, someone that I would 
love to meet. He's wrote Fingerprints of the Gods. Um, he's wrote America Before. He's basically got the idea, uh, which runs alongside a book that I'm creating called Bridges. A little plug there, uh, which hopefully will be out soon. And um, uh, his ideas of uh, a civilization existing before 12,500 years ago. This is an episode that I'm going to be doing on uh, Graham Hancock and those um, iterations that he has and the uh, basic background to him and why he thinks what he thinks and why I go along with his ideas really um so we'll be looking into those things the younger dryas uh, impacts hypothesis uh, graham hancock and and those things as well so those are the upcoming videos to the channel uh, and as i've not said yet please like subscribe um, it really does help uh, a small channel out obviously you know um, the more subscribers i have the more chance i have of you seeing these videos if there's any talk topic that you would like the conspiracy cupboard to cover please leave a comment down below and uh, i will try and get into it so from dave elsie mischief signing out He learned from the best, including William B. Porter, who had masterminded. Oh, fuck. This was not a guy who could be taken serious. Called uh, Fresenden, uh, Fresenden. But person, I've probably said that wrong. Second, secondary, but person. Let me. Uh, Suspending construction, uh, superintending construction. These account for many of his patents obtained over a period of 